You're gonna learn how and why you should use highlighting to save and get the most out of everything you read, especially physical books. Now, first, a metaphor. If you read books without taking notes or even highlighting important sections, it's like a leaky bucket. You're filling it with water, but that water is just running straight out. You might be getting all of this great knowledge as you're reading the book, but you have no way of saving it or coming back to it later. You don't wanna always have to be going back through the book, trying to find that useful bit of information you got from reading it. My philosophy is every time I read a book, I wanna condense that information into as tight and clear of a package as possible for my future self so that I hardly ever have to go back into it and so I can always find that most important information from the book in the future. That means that as I'm reading, I'm scanning and looking for little ideas, snippets, sentences, bits of text that capture core ideas of the book as succinctly as possible so that I can create little hooks to remind myself in the future of what I learned from that book. Now, this might be counterintuitive if you're used to highlighting whole pages or sections of a book, because we don't want to do that. Again, we want to make this as succinct and as efficiently compacted as possible. In my experience reading nonfiction, there's usually a couple of sentences somewhere in a given section or chapter that really perfectly captures the central idea. And if you can just find those couple of sentences and save them, you're going to be able to immediately recall the core theses of that part of the book just by reviewing those couple sentences. A good example of this comes from the book Debt, The First 5,000 Years. There's a great concept in the book I love, which is that you should never settle your debts or transactions with your friends, because as soon as you do, you're suggesting that you two are not going to have a relationship in the future. This is actually why I don't like Venmoing people for things, because if I'm Venmoing a friend after a dinner, I'm kind of saying that I don't expect you to ever get dinner for me, right? Or I don't expect to ever give you dinner or something, right? It's actually better to have informal, you know, debt calculations amongst friends where you're inviting each other over for things, buying rounds of drinks, you're not transacting on Venmo after every single interaction. Now, the author David Graeber has a great example in his book Debt, where he tells the story of a son who left home, he got an itemized bill from his father of every expense that he had incurred as a child, including even the hospital bill from when he was born. He paid the debt for some strange reason, but he never spoke to his father again because his father had essentially wiped the slate clean in their relationship. He'd said, I do not want to have a future relationship with you, so I am flattening out all of our debt right here. Whenever I hear that story, it reminds me of the whole concept that makes up a sizable chapter of the book. I don't need to save anything else. And so finding little stories like that is a great way to create these hooks for yourself. Another way to find really good information to highlight is to think about what resonates with you. So what is it that when you read it, you go, wow, that's really insightful, or huh, I hadn't thought of it that way. Something being surprising is a really great way to judge what might be a useful highlight for later, because when you read it again in the future, it will spark that sense of surprise again and remind you of the core idea you were trying to save. You can also scan for information that's useful for a current project you're working on. This is especially helpful if you're reading nonfiction to learn something new, develop a new skill, pick up a new hobby, uh, because as you're reading, you'll probably see the little bits that are gonna help you solve the problem that you're encountering, and you can just highlight those as you go to make your own tactical outline later. Another way to think of highlights is what you might want to quote or reference in the future. When I was reading The Almanac of Naval Ravikant, I knew that I was going to be making a video about it, which should be popping up in the corner here. And a lot of the quotations and things I was citing, I knew that would be, they would be really helpful in writing articles in the future, but they would also help tell an interesting story on video here, like I did in that video. That book was also great because there's so many really nice bite-sized aphorisms in it, like learn to sell, learn to build. If you can do both, you will be unstoppable. It's just like so much good knowledge packed in that one sentence. So I was highlighting like crazy as I read it. And then if I'm reading fiction, I'll typically just highlight lines that I think are particularly beautiful, insightful, inspiring. Like this line from Infinite Jest that I saved, where the author David Foster Wallace says, we are all dying to give our lives away to something, to God or Satan, politics or grammar, topology or philately. The object seemed incidental to this will to give oneself away utterly to games or needles to some other person. Now, one thing that's probably surprising about my highlighting is that I am almost always doing it in physical books. I never read on Kindle anymore because it's so easy to highlight and save your highlights from physical books now. Before we get into how to do that, let's go over how to highlight. Now, this doesn't have to be super complicated. What I do is whenever I'm reading a book, I pick a sticky color for it, in this case, red, and I'll put a bunch of those tabs in the back of the book so that I have them saved. Then as I'm reading, I'll just take one out and I'll usually place it right on the page wherever the sentence is that I want to save. Just like that. 
Now, as I'm reading the first time, I err on the side of taking more highlights because I know that after I've gone through and read the book, some things I'm gonna realize weren't actually that important. I might prefer some highlights over others. So I take more as I'm reading through and then figure that I can whittle them down later. If I wanna take extra notes, I might write some notes in the margins along with the highlighted stickies so that I can remind myself of why I found that important later. Or sometimes I'll keep a separate notebook to the side and I'll write down any notes from the book in the notebook as I'm reading with a link to the page number written there as well so that I know what page of the book inspired that thought. That's a process called taking smart notes. And if you're curious about it, I have a good post on my blog uh, about it as well. But in general, I try to keep it pretty simple and just add a sticky for anything that sparks my interest while I'm reading. Once I've finished reading, now I need to save those highlights to my Rome database, which is where the process gets pretty cool. And by the way, if you're into all of this knowledge management stuff and getting the most out of what you read and turning it to your advantage, then be sure to subscribe and check out some of the other videos because this is something that I talk about a lot on this channel. Now, how do we get the highlights out of the book and into the Rome database? Well, uh, this is actually something that got way easier in the last year because there's this great app called Readwise and they have an OCR scanner where you can take a picture of a book and then you can highlight the section of the page that you wanna save. You can add any other notes to it. You can mark the page number and then it automatically gets saved into your Readwise database so that you can go through all those highlights later. Now where it gets extra cool is that Readwise can also automatically export all of those highlights straight into your Evernote, Notion, or your Rome database. So whichever note-taking tool you like to use, Readwise can send all of your book highlights straight into it. This lets me save all of my highlights from a book I've just finished in usually a few minutes and then immediately have have them in my note database later for me to review, for me to uh, incorporate into any upcoming articles, for me to mention in my Monday newsletter, the medley. It's extremely fast and super useful and has rekindled my ability to read physical books because highlighting from them is so easy now. The last step is to format the highlights once they're in the database. And to do this, I follow a process called progressive summarization popularized by Tiago Forte from his Building a Second Brain course. Now, progressive summarization means going through your notes and adding additional layers of markup to make them more and more succinct. The first thing that I do is I'll go through the notes and I'll add links or hashtags to any other pages in my Rome database that that note might be relevant to. Next, I'll go through and I'll bold the parts of the note that seem particularly relevant. Once I've gone through and bolded it, then I can add a highlighting layer. So adding a highlight on top of some of the most uh, interesting bolded sections. And the next step will be taking those highlighted bits and writing out a little executive summary at the top of the note uh, so that I don't have to go read through all of my highlights. I can just look at, okay, what's my little summary of what the notes from this book are about? And then the absolute last step after that would be to take all of your notes from a source and remix it into something else. Kind of like my videos on the Almanac of Naval Ravikant, Anti-Fragile, or uh, 48 Laws of Power. Now, I don't always go through and do all of this right as soon as I add the book notes because sometimes it's better to wait. As you come back to the note over time, you can add additional layers, you can bold more things, highlight more things, because the value of it's gonna change over time too. Tiago actually recommends not doing it all at once and saving some of it for later so that the note gets progressively more valuable over time and so that you're not spending too much time marking up a note that you might not end up coming back to. But however many layers you wanna do, then it's done. You've finished reading your book, you've taken all of your highlights out of it, you've saved them in your database, and now you have this really rich piece of information that you've distilled from, you know, it could be three, four, 500 pages into one or two pages of the most important ideas from that book so that you can always have it in the future. Once you start highlighting your book smart, you're gonna be able to use them for all kinds of things. If you wanna see one way I use my notes, check out my other video on uh, outlining a new article in under 20 minutes in my Rome database, because that's a great example of how you can use your notes from books, articles, and other sources to create new work, whether it's an article, video, or anything. So definitely check that one out next, and I'll see you in the next video.